Hey guys, uh, this is C.S. Joseph doing the next episode of uh, Confessions of an ENTP. And uh, tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about being intimidating and creepy. Uh, so being intimidating and creepy is basically a problem for any NTP person out there. Uh, it's... It, INTPs even struggle with this as well, but the thing is, is that they don't really have to struggle with it as much because they just don't show up, so it's like not even a problem for them. Uh, but with ENTPs being that ENTPs are extroverted, they also have their extroverted sensing demon out in play on a consistent basis, which is putting... Wow, I'm like burping up a storm here. I have some more Pellegrino, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. I love it. Hey, how you guys doing? You got Isabella in the house, uh, Minar, uh, Jenny, uh, Donchanok, uh, Ratanil. I hope I said your name right. <laughs> Welcome, everybody who's joining in. Anyway, um, so NTPs, ENTPs really struggle with this because when you're an extrovert, you like to go do extrovert things. The problem is, is that between TI parent uh, uh, being uh, direct and exposing, uh, being introverted sensing inferior and being at risk of being depraved, uh, while at the same time of pushing everyone around you away because you're insanely awkward by default, you have extroverted sensing demon, it's extremely off-putting to other people, uh, which is quite fascinating. Because if you think about it, expert intuition hero needs to be desired and wanted by other people uh, consistently. And this that's just kind of like a, a basic rudimentary need that an ENTP has, as well as every child to uh, like be valued by other people at the same time. However, uh, you still have your expert sensing demon. You know, like, for example, I, I remember one time being in this bar uh, and uh, an ENTJ woman came up to me. She was she was pretty lovely. Uh, but I was in this bar and I was on my phone at the time and everyone else was dancing, having a bunch of fun. I was just sitting there with my back against the wall. Uh, basically, I was reading a book at the time because I was completely bored out of my mind. And, you know, she comes up to me and she's like, she's all trying to dance with me and I'm like, no, I don't want to dance with you. And then she got all upset that I like rejected her. And then her immediate response was, "Is like, you are you going to murder me? You look like an axe murderer. Am I going to end up in your trunk tonight, etc." And I'm like, "Wow, okay, thank you for that. You know, okay, yeah, I have expert sensing demons, so yeah, I get that. I just automatically make everybody else around me uncomfortable all the time." even though my expert intuition hero has, likes to be wanted and desired by other people. So it's one of the things that, you know, as an ENTP, hashtag as an XYZ type, LOL, you find yourself in a situation where it's kind of like you're a walking contradiction. It's kind of like how an ESTP would like people to stick around with their SE hero, but their any demon makes them unwanted at all times. So it's, they, they have that, that's like the reverse side of it, like an ESTP has to deal with that. So yeah, it's it's a, a serious issue. Um, what was I reading? Oh, okay, yeah, Lazarus. So I was reading, uh, what was I reading? I was reading a Robert Greene book at the time. I was reading the 33 Strategies of War at that particular moment. And I was also reading um, some documentation about how to solve an IT problem for the hospital uh, conglomerate that I was working for at that time. I, I had uh, become an engineer uh, for a big hospital group in the state of California at the time, and we were dealing with a problem, and I couldn't figure out how to solve this IT issue. So I was reading that at the same time. So I was going back and forth. Uh, between each of the things because when you know when I'm learning uh, doing things as an ENTP as an ENTP maybe that's what I should rename the show as an ENTP dot 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 right <laughs> I think I think I'll actually put that in the actual title um, but yeah H hello uh, Lucy um, but yeah uh, the point is I'm just like okay yeah 
I'm doing more important things right now, and I get, like, everyone's trying to get laid and whatnot, but, like, that's just not my thing. But the thing is, though, like, when when I was actually working for the hospital in those days, I had dated probably, gosh, I lost count. It's, it's a minimum of 48 up to 60-plus different women that I dated with, like, over the period of about six to eight months when I was working for the hospital. And I mean, it was a lot. I I even got like a, a reputation around work because there was some work events and every time there was like a work event, I'd, I'd, bring, I'd bring a girl basically and they're like, wow, Chase, you, who is it this time, you know? So it really wasn't until I had met uh, Kim after a bit that I decided to be exclusive at that point in time and then uh, I didn't have that reputation around the office anymore of uh, you know dating so many women etc although as much as people give me so much crap about dating so many women I'm I'm just like yeah but like I didn't want to have sex with them because that's just kind of a thing about ENTPs. ENTPs don't usually want to have meaningless sex because they any hero likes to extract meaning and desire and have it like actually be real because, you know, one night stands might be desire only, but Effie Child's like, well, does this person actually value me? And Effie Child's like, no, they don't value me. So TI parent gets in the way. So this is why ENTPs are often averse to having one night stands, etc. Uh, so it's just kind of thing. Although I do admit I did have at least one particular midnight stand in those days. But uh, for the most part, yeah, I just didn't unite myself with those women because I knew that I have SI inferior Stockholm syndrome and could like basically become loyal to those women, uh, you know, and I don't want to become unfairly loyal to those women, etc. So I rejected that ENTJ woman, woman because I found her to be insincere. While she's throwing some desire in my direction, uh, I had seen her do the same to multiple other men that night anyway. And through casually observing her, I knew that there was nothing about me that made me actually special to her. It's more of like, great, am I just going to be used by another person? No thanks. I didn't want to be used, and I really wanted to continue reading my book. I was not there basically to get laid. I was there to, uh, I just, just came there with my coworkers and they were all dancing and whatnot. And I was completely bored out of my mind. It's almost as if I allowed my SI inferior to actually be obligated in going to this bar, uh, you know, in the first place. So yeah. Anyway, uh, sure thing, Luna Luna, welcome to the show. Uh, very much uh, welcome to the show. What is a flex session? What what does that mean, Lazarus? I, I don't I don't understand. Um, so anyway, but throughout my travels in my life, uh, one thing that I've always noticed is that ENTPs are often seen as other people as intimidating and as creepy. And in the words of my INFJ mentor, who taught me Jungian analytical psychology, he would often tell me that, "Wow, Chase." You are always dressed like a mafia hitman. Like, do you not even understand that? Have, have you even considered that, like, like at all? And I'm just like, no, no, I don't. And he's like, look, you're always dressed in some type of tactical or combat gear that's very black, and I don't think anyone could even see you at night. And I'm like, okay. That's, that's a fair point, and, he, and it's also true that I would have at least three different blades on my person at all times on top of a 40 Smith & Wesson uh, firearm at the same time, which was my concealed carry. So uh, let's say, yeah, why? Well, it's because, you know, when I was homeless, I actually, like, I was, <laughs> I was jumped, or at least people attempted to jump me on multiple occasions, you know, for example... Uh, also, uh, it may have been that night, actually, after when the bar with that ENTJ woman or whatnot, but later that night, I had to get gas out of my car before going to a different bar, etc., and it was like at 11.30 p.m. at a gas station in the middle of nowhere, and these two Meganos came after me, basically, and, uh, literally, while I was pumping gas, and, uh, 
they got out of their vehicle and they were they were, they were coming at me pretty hard. Um, my any hero saw it coming, so luckily I had my trunk open and I pulled out a bat, basically. And uh, needless to say, uh, they didn't mess with me that well and whatnot, so I, I moved on. Although, really, really funny thing, though, there was another situation involving that same bar with uh, an ENTJ woman that I did have a sexual relationship with at the time. Um, and uh, it's funny because she was having a night out with my INTP uh, co-worker at the time, and she's my ENTJ co-worker. And they went out and bar hopped and whatnot. And I ended up picking her up from somewhere the next morning. It, I can't remember. It may have been his house. I don't even know. But uh, I end up picking her up, and I drove. Uh, I drove in the town to drop her off for her car. And then when I did that, uh, I, I look at her and I say, "Okay, the second you get out of this vehicle, you need to get out of this vehicle as soon as possible. And then you need to beeline directly for your car. Put your key in." and get into the vehicle as quickly as you can and immediately turn on your engine, lock your doors, and get and then get the vehicle on the road immediately without wasting any time. And I told her, you're a very slow person, and the amount of time it would take you uh, to get to your vehicle and get out on the road, uh, you will be attacked within that amount of time. She looked at me like I was crazy. She looked at me like I was creepy. It probably like, wow, Chase, you're like being really creepy right now. And I'm like, no, actually, I could see you into your future and you're about to get jumped or whatever. But I was so frustrated with her anyway. I'm like, you know what? Whatever. You know what? Just do whatever you want. Whatever you want. Bye bye. I'm leaving. So I leave. I just leave. And I, I turn the corner and then I do like, um, I do two uh, left hand turns uh, uh, to basically get back out on the other on the main road in that city that I was staying in uh, NorCal and then I ended up going to a, a gas station at the time and I started pumping gas apparently me and gas stations don't mix and around that time she calls me and she's like oh hey what the hell is your problem and I'm like what are you talking about these guys tried to jump me and I barely got away how did you know how did you know and how dare you leave me there uh, in that situation and I'm like well you wouldn't listen to me and you told me to my face that I was being a creeper so I just figured that you had it all handled right so it's like it's it's situations like like that that people don't realize oh yeah yeah people talk about the second amendment Lev I mean in California you can't legally defend yourself so it's just a it's just a show of force etc and it's like wow it's it's not it's not appropriate. So like, come on, I I'm not uh, I'm not interested. You know, it, it's so it's just so ridiculous. People getting wet unnecessarily. That doesn't work for everyone, Lazarus. Like seriously, come on. So anyway, uh, so yeah, she she just said that how did i see that well it's easy because when i was looking at the car with a parking lot i saw these two um I, um I saw these uh this one white dude and this one mexicano who was inside of this uh white van but that had no windows on it except for the very front one i was like a standard work truck and they were eyeballing her the whole time they were looking right at this entj that was in my car the entire time so i explained to her that she is at risk but she decided not to listen and instead label me a creeper instead, which was like really frustrating. The thing is, in order for I, I in order for expert sensing to be as creepy and as off-putting as it is, the trade-off is that I can look into other people's futures because I have expert intuition, hero. And it's prescience. It literally is future sight. I can look into other people's fates and other people's futures and change their fate and change their future if I want to. And that's what I was doing. I was giving her an opportunity to make a choice to change her fate because I saw the most likely fate that she would have through my expert intuition hero that she would be attacked and jumped by these guys and eventually raped, etc. And, you know, and, you know, let's be honest, she was a very attractive woman. And, uh, and those men definitely would have capitalized on that and taken full advantage of her, especially since the license plate on her vehicle was out of state as well. So she furthermore looked like a victim. And I was aware of all these things, and I was telling her of the risk. 
but no, that's creepy, etc. right? Even though I was providing her a warning as essentially an oracle, you might want to watch out for that thing. But then she decided to be ungrateful and disrespect me. So I'm like, okay, you know what? F it. You do whatever you want. You got it all figured out. I ain't going to sit around here and protect you while you're disrespecting me. Bye. And I did. And guess what? Those men came after her. And she just barely got out. By the time... Uh, you know, she had just barely gotten in her car and the doors locked and had already had the car in gear as they were at basically going to attempt to break open her window, essentially. But uh, they couldn't really stop her at that point. And that's just the way it went. So, you know, it's it's just kind of it's kind of interesting uh, how that goes. Um, yeah, California is a, is not an appropriate place to live, quite frankly. Um so yeah anyway uh i don't know what pity cash handouts have anything to do with anything i don't understand um so yeah it, it really comes down to paying attention and ntps are very attentive people right and that's another reason why we're called creepy or or intimidating is because People, we overhear people's conversations and we keep track of that information and we're aware of it at all times. And then we join the conversations or even bring up those topics later to individual people that were having those conversations. And they're like, well, how did you know that? Well, how do you know that? And it's like, because you were being very loud in the room and I could hear everything you were saying. So now I'm starting a conversation with you to actually go over that information uh, with you. Like, do you not understand how physics works? You know, oh, but you're being a creeper because you're obviously, you know, paying attention to me and I don't want your attention because you're dark and scary. Er. And it's like, look, I really don't care. I, I, I don't care. You can't stop me from putting my attention towards certain things or not. You know, maybe you could possibly do that to an SI parent or an SI hero when you obligate them because, you know, sometimes. You know, let's say that they're in a relationship with an SE parent or an SE hero, and those SE parent and SE hero get super jealous when they're giving their attention to other people and whatnot, and then they expect the SI parent and the SI hero to limit what attention that they give at certain times anyway. But, like, I'm pragmatic. I ain't affiliative. I ain't going to do that. My attention's going to go where I damn well please. So, like, get over yourself. You know what I'm saying? So that, but then these people just label me, you know, creepy anyway, when the reality situation is I listen to everything they were saying and I know exactly how to solve the problem. And then I am engaging them by helping them and telling them the truth of the matter so that they can actually solve their problem. I'm actually helping them and giving them an opportunity to change their fate because I could see what's going to happen with my extrovert intuition hero. But no, that's creepy, right? Because the guy that's usually almost always dressed in all black is coming out of nowhere with something I never told him about and is solving my problem right now, right? See, that's how they take it. That's, that's how they do it. But because, you know, the ENTP is so misunderstood and because the presence of extroverted sensing demon, how exactly is it appropriate for me to even have a conversation with those people about that content that they never even told me to begin with? It's technically inappropriate, but I'm so pragmatic that I don't care if it's inappropriate, so I'm going to tell them anyway. You see what I'm saying? So, like, it's just the way it is. Yeah, exactly, Cortland. Don't listen to me while I'm yelling. I know. They're being, like, super loud in the room. This happens so many times, especially in high school. It was literally the most uh, uh, annoying thing in the world. Wow. Uh, apparently, Railgun just made some awesome sushi. Uh, she's... Um, uh, wow, this is uh, very well done. And <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. You want one? Uh, no, I don't want one right now. I'm full. Thank you for the uh, hamburger you made me earlier, though. I appreciate it. So, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants the truth when it looks uncomfortable. I mean, here's another way to look at it. Do you guys want, uh, you know, comforting lies or inconvenient uh, truths or painful truths? So that's really the difference of society as uh, we know it, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's it's a thing, right? So, oh yeah, Railgun just randomly turned uh, uh, Japanese all of a sudden. So she's like cooking Japanese food like crazy. I imagine sukiyaki is in my future. She also is making yakisoba and sushi as well as other Asian dishes. Uh, so yeah, 
Um, she is a fantastic woman in the kitchen. And all of you STP women out there who are like, oh, I'm really bad in the kitchen. Actually, y'all just lazy. So it's all about trial and error. And maybe you should allow your S extroverted sensing hero and extroverted sensing parent be okay with failure sometimes and stop trying to be perfect in the kitchen. You might actually accomplish something because guess what? That's what Railgun does. Is, that's what she does. She does is, LOL. Uh, she actually accomplishes things. So it is what it is. Uh, so yeah. Sukiyaki is good times. Um, yeah. But yeah, she's like Japanese right now. I think it's because we've been watching Great Teacher Onizuka, as well as The Bride of the Ancient Magus, and I just finished Psycho Pass, which is an exquisite anime. It's one of my most favorite animes. Uh, I don't know if it's my absolute favorite. No, my absolute favorite is Death Note, hands down. Uh, second most favorite... Oof, that's hard to say. It might be Trigun, and then third might be Psycho Pass, basically. I really like the dystopian cyberpunk uh, animes. They're, they're pretty dope. I wanted to uh, watch Goblin Slayer, but I just was like, no, I can't handle that right now. I really, especially given my past, I really, really struggle with watching content on television that has to do with rape. And that's why I like that movie Taken with Liam Neeson. I couldn't even handle watching that. Yes? Huh? Oh. Oh, you got to uh, you got to set the defaults on that. Here, I'll show you real quick. Here, just hand it to me. I'll show you how it works. Okay, so what you got to do is you hit the the gear button. Okay, you go to the device, save the. Oh, it is checked. Well, it should have should have done it. I saw you. Did you not have? Uh... Um. Wow. You're right, it didn't. Wow, that's lame. We'll take a look as to why that's happening. Might be, um, try to use your regular camera and see if you can record with your regular camera to see if it'll save. So, if it doesn't, then there's a problem with the phone. I'll have to figure that out. Huh, tech support, guys, it happens. Um, She's trying to film herself making sushi, and it didn't work out, apparently, which is really sad. But the sushi looks amazing, and you all saw it, so at least we got that documented. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Elf in line, uh, is that really uh, messed up? No, I won't watch Evangelion. No thanks. I did I did uh, watch Code uh, Geiss, uh, or Geese, or whatever it's called. It's fantastic. I do like that. Um... I did like Attack on Titan as well. Um, so, anyway, enough about anime. So, dealing with creepiness is... Wow, it's like really hot in here all of a sudden. I'm just going to take that off. Um, it was cold outside, but now it's like hot in here. Uh, even though like there's fires going everywhere and like there's smoke all over the place. So, it's just, it's just, it's just everything's on fire right now, so... Like just a little bit north of me, there's like 3,000 acres ablaze right now. So, um, do you think all INTJs have a good singing voice? No, I don't. Um, I I tried to watch Bleach. I couldn't. I really, really struggle with shonen uh, anime. I, I I just I can't really handle that very well. Um, so anyway. Uh, being intimidating is another thing. So, but let's talk about the intimidation side. Like, when you're when you're TI parent and you're solving people's problems or sharing your insights with other people and correcting other people, doing it all the time. A lot of people just don't understand the trope of the ENTP, which is chaotic neutral. Chaotic neutral is the style of the ENTP, which basically means. One day I'm going to save your life. The exact following day I'm going to steal your car, basically. That is chaotic neutral. But it's still neutral. It is still neutral. And uh, ENTPs are very neutral people. Very neutral people. And uh, what they, what people don't understand is that, like, you know, when I, when I talk about 
somebody or a people group of some kind, like INTJs, for example, or INFPs, or any of the 16 types, people automatically assume, oh, you've been hurt by that type. That's why you're taking it out on them. And it's like, no, I don't care. I mean, if I was an ENFP, that would be true. But no, it's not me at all. I'm actually true. I'm like truly neutral in that moment. Uh, I am a chaotic, neutral person, which is still neutral. And I'm saying that y'all have these potentials within you. These are potential behaviors that all of XYZ of the 16 types are capable of. You might want to like figure that out. But no, people take it personally. They get all butthurt about it, likely because they don't have fathers in their lives because fathers is what actually uh, provides criticism towards children, which removes entitlement, for example. But due to the lack of fathers or the insane amount of inept fathers in our society, well, guess what? Uh, children oftentimes end up entitled because they've been overly feminized as children so that when they enter into society, into the workforce, for example, they take their entitlement with them because their father wasn't there to burn the entitlement away through criticism, for example, because that's what the masculine is supposed to provide for children. But good luck finding that in Western society. But the point is, is that when I take on that, uh, archetype of using TI parent potentially even in a fatherly way or even in a masculine way for example when I'm criticizing other people oh I've just hurt the little special snowflakes and then as a result of that my SE demon kicks in and then I'm coming off as intimidating when the reality of the situation is intimidation has nothing to do with it it's not my fault that people are choosing to be ignorant and as a result of their ignorance choosing to get butt hurt over my neutral position of saying that they have the capacity to cause problems with certain XYZ potential behaviors I'm only pointing out their potential behavior they still have a choice as a human being to choose not to behave that way but then it's like no 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 mr cs joseph or no 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 entps are too intimidating i can't be around them and it's like okay sure uh if you really don't want to listen if you really don't want to learn that's okay with me you can go elsewhere you can get away from me i it doesn't matter i've done my duty i've done my good deed for the day by telling you the potential wrong that you could be committing but, you know, it's up to you. You still have to make a choice because guess what, folks? Extroverted intuition hero still exists to give people a choice. I am not here to take anyone's freedom of choice away. But people assume I am because SE Demon. Oh, SE Demon is forcing these things down my throat. You have TE, uh, you have TE Critic and you're criticizing me with your TE Critic and you're labeling me. And your ESFP Super Ego is after me right now. So you're forcing me to, uh, to behave this way. And it's like, no, I'm not actually any hero is still there you still have a choice to make on your own you could choose to not be ignorant you can choose to perform better you can choose to have a better life you can choose to be grateful you can choose to be sympathetic and empathetic you can choose to rise above your own circumstances even if you've never had a father you can choose to humble yourself instead of being arrogant at all times you can make these decisions but when I'm pointing out that these decisions exist, oh, Mr. C.S. Joseph, you're being intimidating. Here's the problem. Every single ENTP out there deals with this. There's a, there's a famous ENTP out there. He's known as the Matani. Uh, his, his real name is Alexander Jean Turco. And uh, he's a, a District of Columbia lawyer who ended up becoming the absolute political overlord of uh, EVE Online, basically, and he makes his living off of this video game, etc. And documenting his entire rise to power uh, has been done multiple times. He even has a comic book made about the guy, uh, etc., because he was the greatest spy master in EVE's history. Wrong, actually. <laughs> no, I am the greatest spy master in EVE history. It's because I actually modeled his entire rise to success based, and I just basically did everything he did, and I copied that, basically, and then I was able to take it multiple steps further uh, as a... a, as a I was a spy master in EVE Online, and eventually I became the, um, gosh, what is it, the uh, the shadow broker, if you all played Mass Effect. I became the shadow broker of EVE Online, where I was literally selling intel 
twenty four seven to people who are on the opposite sides of a war and manipulating the war as a third party. It was hilarious and it was amazing, and I made so much money off of that. It's insane. I think at one point in time, I had three titans in the game, and and a titan is worth like at least two thousand bucks, you know. Uh, and I had like three of them on my person uh, inside of, uh, and they each have doomsday devices. They 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 just absolutely destroy everything, but. Those are the good old days, but I no longer play EVE Online because I just I just can't handle it anymore. Um, special thanks uh, to the people out there who helped me run my spy network known as Polaris. Especially special thanks to um, Kirsty who helped uh, code the IT services uh, to make that possible. And I made sure that Kirsty received one of those titans that I had as uh, compensation uh, for uh, their uh, involvement uh, in that. But regardless of the matter, when it comes to the Mitanni, I, aka Alexander Jean Turco, it's so funny because he's had to deal with all of the same exact criticisms I have within his own uh, online community, which is goonfleet.com, because we come from somethingawful.com as goons, etc. At least before it turned into this like fourth wave feministic liberal uh, leftist uh, organization, which it's so funny that it changed, etc. But uh, in those days, it's just like you know, I, I, I really, I really just don't get it. You know, uh, he, he had to deal with the same thing. You know, um, he had he had scandal after scandal after scandal. For example, there was the there was Bookgate where he was trying to hire an, an author to write a, a book about the history of Eve Online in like a fiction book of some kind, which is really cool, taking actual events in the game and creating a story out of it. That blew up in his face. Uh, and he's just trial and erring it through it. And I've trial and erred so many times throughout this community, but I've also received a huge amount of hate for every time trial and erring. Like, you know, it's like, oh, you know, uh, Chase is a bad business owner. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah, but I didn't have any experience doing much of that anyway so what do you expect i don't learn from others mistakes i only learn from my own mistakes stop projecting how you would do things onto me i'm my own person right oh but you're intimidating yeah i am intimidating i guess or maybe it's actually really just misunderstood so an entp being misunderstood is just intimidating or creepy to everybody else guess what folks intjs have a similar problem they are heavily misunderstood, but they don't come off as intimidating or creepy as much. Maybe a little intimidating. It's more off, uh, they probably come off as pompous and arrogant, and because of that, everyone's trying to tear them down and take them down a few notches because of how pompous and arrogant they can come off. I actually have a video uh, that I'm releasing in about two or three days that will actually detail all of that, and it's a little bit longer than usual. It's like, it's like a, might, it might come out like 15 minutes long or 17 minutes long, uh, who knows? It depends on how it's edited. But regardless, this video is going to be coming out, and I'll be going way deeper into INTJs than I do typically. Now, back to Alexander John Turco. Uh, there's even one time where just some some woman freaked out about him uh, at uh, at a club and saying, you know, he was being a pervert or whatever, and all these things. And I'm like, yeah, I remember being accused of being a pervert on multiple situations. <laughs> it's like, yeah, man, he just he keeps rolling with the punches. He keeps rolling with the hits. But you know what the best part is? Is his SI inferior is aspirational, so he never gives up. And that's the thing. When you tell people the truth to your TI parent, you're going to be intimidating, you know. And wow, this cat, like, just has to have attention. You're just trying to get hair all over me. Yes, that's all you're trying to do. That's That's all she wants. She just wants to put lots of hair on me for some reason. This is my INFP cat. Her name is Icicle. She is very soft and uh, very cute. And as I have demonstrated many times, I could pick her up by her chest fur and dangle her in front of the camera as I have on other occasions. And she likes to lecture with me. It's like she's training to become a, a cat professor uh, herself, etc. for some reason. So she is my, uh, she's my lap cat or my, uh, my cat professor, this INFP uh, kitty. People are like, how do you type a, a cat as an INFP? You're crazy. And I'm like, have you ever seen a cat like run into things, like run into walls and like collide with stuff? Then they shouldn't because it's like, wait a minute, where's your whiskers and whatnot? Chances are that's an XE trickster cat, for example. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, uh, 
fancy that. Um, I think ENTPs are proud of their pair, so they tend to hold on to it until it becomes toxic inside of them, and occasionally they will lash out at society. But that's just opinion; could be wrong. That's not. That's actually. That's actually kind of accurate. And this is actually shown in the anime uh, Psychopaths uh, season two, actually, because the main villain is. Um, uh, Kamui Kirito and uh, Kamui Kirito is this guy who um, he is an ENTP basically and he feels so unwanted because the civil system has, has effectively abandoned him and becomes the main villain of season 2 you can actually see him as a villain in season 1 if you're paying attention which is it's pretty cool you know if you watch if you watch both uh, both seasons uh, twice basically back to back you'll start to see a lot of stuff that you actually missed, which I love shows like that that have rewatch value because it's like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Wow, you know. Uh, so yeah, some cats do cartwheels. Uh, this cat does not do cartwheels. This cat is just, I don't know. She's like a, lo we call her the cat loaf. She's just this loaf of cat that just lays around and trying to be cute at all times and then she'll just start randomly purring you just look at her and she'll just start purring and it's like okay do you, do you think you're wanted right now is that is that what it is? is is that how it is so yeah um um so anyway uh yeah i'm, I'm glad you found some value out of the entj video uh, that's cool. Don't forget, you guys can go to csjoseph.life forward slash members and get the premium lectures, which are like anywhere from 45 minutes to over an hour long. And you can get like really, really deep dive into the science if you want. And season 14 and season 19 will be re-released soon and made available to people, not to members per se. Well, actually, they'll just be uh, for sale for like a one-time price and you're good to go. And then you have access to those indefinitely, basically. So that's that's uh, coming around. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, the bottom line is, folks, just recognize that this is a struggle that ENTPs have. Uh, being intimidating and being creepy. This is like just this is just normal. And if you're like an NTJ um, man or woman, for example, and you're complaining about not being able to find NTPs, chances are it's probably because you're stereotyping them as intimidating or creepy. And if you actually spend the time to get to know them, you'll realize that that frog is actually a prince. And that's probably one of the reasons why you are alone, because let's be honest, out of all of the types, NTJs judge people by their cover more than anybody else. They judge books by their cover more than anybody. So understand that that's what ends up happening. And that's why the number one reason why NTPs don't get with NTJs is specifically because of that concept and uh, judge a book by their cover etc and it's really just comes down to fear 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 so let go of your fear and be willing to traverse the deep what's really interesting is that infjs when it comes to entps find entps far more alluring and they're willing to take the risk they're willing to take that risk to take the deep plunge into the very oceanic depths the dark cold oceanic depths of an entp whereas an intj Let's just judge a book by a cover. And it's like, well, that's a really scary maelstrom. I'm not sure I want to go down there and figure out what's going on. The reality of the situation is every single time I've seen an NTJ get with an NTP or an ENTP, they've been pleasantly surprised, provided the NTP is, you know, proportionately mature. And when I say proportionately mature, mature in such a level where they are proportionately mature to the NTJ uh, partner. So, yeah. That's uh, that's a thing. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to see like the list of people that I've typed in the past, it's csjoseph.life forward slash famous. Um, uh, okay, the thing that made him intimidating was the creep factor all up in your face, business wanting to know all your thoughts. You feel mentally naked when around ENTPs. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Well, anyway, folks, that's uh, basically, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I think any ENTP can talk for a really long time in an eloquent manner. So, yeah. Uh, is attraction mostly equal to compatibility? Yes. Um, 
are like our gold relationships generally alluring not necessarily i think pedagogue relationships are far more alluring per se but it doesn't mean that the results going to be the best um well if you beg to differ as an infj maybe you are either not an infj or if you are really an infj perhaps you haven't been around people enough who are quality versions of that and that's the thing about injs they're still introverts and oftentimes don't allow themselves to go out and be exposed to new people on a regular basis, which can be an issue. So, um, okay, and, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sorry your sushi didn't get filmed. We'll figure out what's going on. Just really awkward that it didn't work out. Where's the other videos that we had from earlier? They're not in your list anymore. So something's happening. I don't know. Oh, you deleted them. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Fair enough. All right. Let's let's read some of this. Uh, let's read some of this chat. Um, yeah, INTJs do have all the talent in the world. They do. They they they're the most talented of all the types. Uh, provided with their achie achievement combined with their expert sensing, aspirational. The thing is, whether or not they'll use it, that's kind of an issue. Um, Okay, so Ashley Deaton says, you are really right. When I first met my INTP friend, I found something about him just off because he was so anxious. I gave him a chance and it went well. Good friend two years later. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Um, I'm sure many people's questions get ignored, Gustavo. Just keep trying. Like, it happens. Um, so... Um, uh, yeah, distance and attachment. I think you need to do a little bit more research on that. Uh, please go to csjoseph.life forward slash type grid and then like get yourself a copy of the type grid so you can type yourself and others more accurately. That way you won't be as confused uh, and know where your preferences really lie. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, so Enigma joins the live vid and just asks a random question. Okay. Uh, and none of those questions have anything to do with the content that we're talking about. Guys, if you want to want, if you guys want to like ask me questions that will become an initiate at csjoseph.life forward slash members. So you can do the members Q and a live stream like every month and I'll answer your questions there. Uh, so many people just ask me random questions all the time. Sometimes I answer them, sometimes I don't. And these questions aren't exactly relevant to this particular stream. So, um, uh, Okay. Yes, ENTPs can see desire with expert intuition. What do they think when they see they want in someone's eyes for them? Do they do anything about it? it yeah, they do sometimes. It depends if they're comfortable with it, really. That's, that's all it is. My IQ score is 108. Like That's like an actual official test. So INTJs are obsessed with IQ. And the reality of the situation is, is that IQ is arbitrary. Because IQ, while INTJs can have super high IQ, they're nothing more than the hair. Because a hard worker like me with an IQ of 108 can still be successful because I'm the tortoise and the tortoise wins the race. Whereas the INTJs just burn out and lose the race. You know, that's a thing. So be very careful, INTJs. Make sure you're willing to become the tortoise, even though you're so happy that you're already the hare. Okay, so I feel like I live in a parallel life with social interactions. What I carefully present versus what I really think and feel, it feels like a prison cell that I am learning to unlock. Guess what type I am? <laughs> well said, uh, Mastery. Okay. So awesome comment there, Artemis, uh, that you understand INTPs. That's cool. And uh, so in your videos, you say a partner should always approach an ENTP. How does that work for an ENTP male? Well, I talk about this in the Cutting Edge uh, show for uh, journeyman members at csjoseph.life forward slash members. And there is the dating tips uh, live stream that I did, with, which explains all of that. So just get that for like one month, you know, and treat it like Netflix or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And then binge watch everything you can and then just let it go. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, but uh IQ is not reliable. They would even let T.I. Trickster, a.k.a. Ty Lopez, an ENFP into Mensa. IQ does not matter. Okay, let's just be real. Let's just be real. 
Uh, you don't think 108 is accurate? Well, I mean, it kind of is. So, yes, FI Trickster can make ENTPs even more creepy. We didn't talk about FI Trickster that much. But FI Trickster is just, I don't have, like, a value system. I adopt other people's value systems. And value systems change between people in different environments. So I don't have my own value system, per se. Uh, I think over time I might discover what my personal principles and what, I, what my values are, but there'd be very few of them, right? Like for example, uh, don't uh, one of one of my values is don't have sex with a virgin unless you intend on keeping her indefinitely. Basically, that's one of my values, etc., uh, and has been for a very long time, right? But I don't need to do that because I am married to Railgun and I love my wife dearly. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. Uh, okay, so, yeah, anyone can come off creepy. Um, can you give examples of, uh, the talents INTJs have? Basically being able to master any skill and perform well at any skill. That's their big thing. How do you know your IQ is accurate? I mean, I took the official test, so what do you want me to say, Captain Snooze? Are ENTPs able to be charismatic through development? Of course, because the ENTP with the most charisma in history is Adolf Hitler, and he's probably the most charismatic person who ever walked the earth, quite frankly. Uh, I'm not saying this is a good thing, I'm just saying this is a true thing, you know? But yeah, ENTPs are extra charismatic through uh, development. Um, so, okay. And... Uh, you find the creepiness funny. Okay, that's that's fine. <laughs> uh, what are some examples of... I already answered that. Like, come on. Does that mean you would end up adopting values of your partner, inclu including regarding religion? No, not necessarily, because TI Parent is still in there, and I would still have to agree. Uh, it's more inaccurate that my partner would end up adopting my belief system because I have TI Parent. But then since I am married to a fellow TI parent, that's also very interesting. But that also leads to some really amazing discussions. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Um, yes, I typed Hitler. Yes, I did. He is an ENTP. Seriously. Yes, informative initiating movement. That is his interaction style. It's I and he is ISFJ focused and he is a decorated soldier in World War One as an ISFJ. You might want to do some research there. But yes, he is an ENTP. Just like Benjamin Franklin is an ENTP, okay? That's a thing, so. Uh, um, let's see here. Uh, what function relates to piecing together multiple information for a solid conclusion? That's a TE uh, function. Okay, can we get a short animations of funny type behaviors such as creepy ENTP? Come on, whatever. Uh, Okay, how can an INTJ get rid of procrastination? It's ruining my life. That answer is provided in season 19's episode for INTJs, which will be made available uh, very soon. So, uh, as in, okay, what? Laz, what are you saying? As in INFP, I find it a bit crazy that someone wouldn't have their own values. See, okay, that's, that's a good point, but that's just reality. Like, I'm sorry, Lazarus, get over it. Like, that's a thing. Because I, and I, I'm so tired of being judged by Effie heroes. Like my sister, for example. Or uh, I was talking to two different ENFJs within the community recently. And they're telling me about how I have to have more values and I have to be a good person because of what I'm saying is potentially alienating other people. And I'm like, okay, so what you're really saying is is that you just want me to enable people, right? Because Jesus didn't enable anyone when he came. He said, quote, I have come, I have not come to unite. I have come to bring a sword and divide people and divide even families, divide husband and wife, divide uh, father and son and mother and daughter, for example. And I don't see him, uh, you know, enabling anybody. He just told the straight up facts, and that's what I'm doing. It's not my fault if people feel bad or get really sensitive about it because then they just, you know, those FE heroes are labeling me insensitive. Alan Chase, you're so insensitive. And I'm just like, I don't care. I don't care. I'm just telling the facts. What you do with it and your reaction to the facts is your choice. It has nothing to do with me, it has everything to do with yourself. You can accept what I'm saying, or you cannot. It's your choice. I don't care. 
just like I don't care what the size of this audience is. Everyone's like, oh, well, if you just change how you do things, Chase, then your, your numbers will go up. And I'm like, I don't care about numbers. I just care about being real. Kind of like Ethan Dolan out of the Dolan Twins. He's an ENTP as well. And he would just rather be real with people. You know, otherwise, why am I just going to change my message because it comes off as insensitive when the reality is it's not that I'm being insensitive, it's that everyone else is being ignorant. That's not my fault. That's on them. You know what I'm saying? Yes, to me, values are arbitrary. Um, anyway. Uh, okay, uh, is an ENTP's development best initiated by others' influence uh, morally? No, it's best uh, influenced by them having experiences and doing things that they've never done before and developing their own self-discipline. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, ENTPs are amoral people, but it's necessary for all of you folks. So, just get over it, you know. Uh no, Hitler is not an INJ. No, he doesn't have performance anxiety. The Blitzkrieg military maneuver is specifically starter type interaction style, okay? Hitler is an ENTP. Like, it's just the reality. Uh, it's just the reality of the situation. So, yeah. Um, what types are mostly natively affected by COVID lockdowns? Pragmatic types. I, I think that would be pretty obvious. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Um, do you think people like Mozart, Beethoven, Da Vinci, basically people who mixed science with art are more likely to be INTJs? I don't know, but I don't see why not. That's a good question, Jumaji. That's, uh, I'll think on that. Um, yeah, uh, let's see. No, a relationship cannot work between ENTP and INFP. No, they can't. Um, so... Yeah, um, ODB is ENFP, the great, who's ODB? I don't, I really don't get this. I don't, I don't understand. <laughs> um, what's the fastest way to aspire through, uh, SE Inferior? Practice. What's God's personality? That is answered in Season 17, Episode 1, Rakesh. You might want to watch that. It's Check it out in the uh, playlists. I actually answer specifically what God's personality is if you can stomach such a lecture, much less if you can stomach the rest of Season 17, because most people can't stomach Season 17. Uh, so hopefully you can get through that. Uh, why are you telling people what type Hitler is now all of a sudden? Because it's time. That's all there is to it. Um... Let's see. Um, uh, yes, I mean, the answer to your question is in Season 14, Episode 9, and that's available at csjoseph.life forward slash members with an apprentice membership. That is the INFJ ENTP Intimacy Lecture. I highly recommend you watch it so you get the answer to your question. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. No, random guy, that's inaccurate. Um, oh, he's a rapper? Okay, fair enough. Yeah, my rapper name is Sharkesh. That's right. It's from my uh, my shark shirt. Like, literally, Railgun took me to Tilly's with my children, and the shark shirt that I, you see me wear was, like, in Tilly's, and she got my children to start chanting shark shirt at the top of their lungs in the middle of the store in order to pressure me to get the shark shirt. And then I wear it. And because my children really like that for some reason. So yes, although it's not particularly my cup of tea, it was just a thing that happened, you know. Any specific careers for an ENTP? Uh, basically an intelligence operative of some kind. It's probably the like, literally read Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Seriously. Uh, um, which types are more popular? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, Lev. I, I don't know. But let's stay on Let's stay on topic, guys. Let's stay on topic here. Um, Y'all seriously need Jesus. I, I think anyone uh, would benefit from understanding the teachings of Jesus Christ as presented through critical thinking and not church bias, let's be honest. Um, okay. Um, 
Provided that Adam and Eve story is true, where the rest of the 14 types uh, come from? Uh, they came from God the Creator, uh, basically. So, yeah. Uh, why wouldn't it work? Well, that's a because they both care about their comfort, and not one is going to comfort the other. So, yeah, it's just going to create problems. So... Okay, ENTP parent, LOL, Q the Apache sexual memes. Uh, yeah, I don't know what those memes are, so that reference just kind of like went out the window there. Uh, yeah. Um, Jamaji, take the time to watch season 17, episode 1, and you will get the answer to your question. Like, seriously, just go to the effort. I'm not going to answer questions when I know that you could spend the effort watching the lectures yourself. It's not a problem. Um, uh, I think it's because ENTPs are... So, Brandon, I think that it's because ENTPs are the most um, pragmatic and most rebellious. However, I think... Satan is more like an FITE user because he's always trying to get Jesus to worship him and always trying to get everyone to worship him all the time and acknowledge that, uh, you know, he's the best because he wants that TE achievement status. He wants that fame. He wants to be thought of highly of others, etc. This is why I think Lucifer is actually an FITE user and not a TIFE user. Uh, so who knows? But uh, that's just a hypothesis on uh, from my point of view. Um, so, but yeah, uh, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more evidence for the resurrection of Jesus than there is of macro evolution. And you can actually take the guy that runs the evolution uh, Reddit, uh, subreddit on Reddit, basically. His name's Eric Pogel. Uh, one of the greatest experts in evolution I've ever seen in my whole life. And even that guy admits that there's more evidence for the resurrection of Jesus than there is for evolution. So you might want to consider that. And if you have an issue, take it up with him. I might actually have Eric as a guest on the show in the very near future. So, um, I mean, Lev, you're coming off like Darkwing Duck there, bro. Let's be honest. Are you the terror that quacks in uh, that flaps in the night? Maybe quacks in the night? I, I don't know. Uh, so, don't you think having Effie Child makes ENTPs less creepy and maybe could even help them have wording that is in their boundaries of the social norms for their prophecies? No, not necessarily, because Effie Child is turned off for the sake of TI Parent once it's developed. And the other thing is, too, like, uh, Effie Child can often get an ENTP in trouble, just like it can get an ESTP in trouble. For some reason, Effie Child, just members of the opposite sex, just automatically assume that you are flirting with them when the reality of the situation is you're just being nice, I guess, but they assume that you're flirting with them, and that can, like, cause a lot of problems uh for etps it's like a huge issue uh so yeah anyway um lucid dreaming yeah lucid dreaming is a thing i don't know much about it though so i'm not really going to uh um yes okabe is an entp uh i still haven't watched steins gate i'm actually trying to avoid steins gate uh because i know that it's an entp infj relationship and i know it's going to screw with me if i watch it so not really sure about that, mostly due to the ENTP aspects. Um, how do I attract ENTP women as an INFJ male? You make them feel wanted and comfortable and watch the season 14, episode nine, which explains all of that. CS Joseph at Life forward slash members, get an apprentice membership and watch the lecture. It's pretty awesome. Uh, okay, uh, the moldy sock beneath your dryer. That's hilarious. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, okay, I, I don't know what you're saying, uh, Flash, um, Cornbread Zizzle, I love your name, that's amazing, uh, what's Adam and Eve's type? I'm not entirely sure what Adam and Eve's type is, I think, I suspect Eve might be an ENFP, but I don't know, um, and uh, how can you tell if an ENTP is being nice or actively or actually flirting then? That's a really tough question. Um, 
I think uh, I think that's what's so alluring about ENTPs is that people can't tell because their seductive style is coquetry and being a coquette. So uh, basically, it's really it's it's really really hard to tell um, if they are being nice or actually flirting. Then, but uh, it's really you can judge it based on how much attention they're giving you over time. If they're giving you consistent attention over time, then it's flirting. If it's just kind of like a one off, then it's just a one off. I guess is probably how I'd answer that. So who knows? Um, okay. Um, all right, so, uh, no, Damon is not an ENTP. No, 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 no. Damon is not an ENTP. He is an ESTP. No, like, no, 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 no. And Elena is an ESTJ, okay? So please, please be aware of that. Uh, and also, uh, gosh, uh, Damon's brother is an INFJ. Okay, that's why he has like a, a a bronze pair, a bronze pair with Elena. But then his brother swoops in and gets in on that Elena action, etc. Even though she's being like mega hypergamous the whole time, but whatever, we could forgive that, right? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, like. Um, yeah, Stefan is an INFJ, okay? If you want to find the real ENTP of that show, look no further than Klaus Michelson. He's the ENTP. Gotta love that chaotic evil, right? The SE demon, etc. So yeah, like, yeah, this is from Vampire Diaries, folks, and the originals. Um, I started watching Legacies, but Legacies is so terrible that I hate the show, and I don't want to have anything to do with the franchise anymore. Um, the originals was definitely their absolute best, in my opinion, but hey. Um, uh, Banjo Man, I'm not sure why people do that. I think it's probably, I mean, parroting the, the pedagogue relations because people just don't understand the science, so that's probably why it is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, it's fair enough. Um, so... Yes, yes, Catherine Pierce, that's right. She was not compatible with either of them. That's correct. Thank you. Someone finally figured that out. And yes, Klaus is the true ENTP of the show. Um, so, and uh, chaotic evil and chaotic neutral, yes, depending on the side of the mind that they're in. Um, okay. Uh, anything else, guys? No, the show. Well, Legacies. Yeah, Legacies is terrible. Like, it is terrible. Vampire Diaries. I, I really liked Silas. Um, I really liked Silas. Uh, very um, ISTJ villain. That was a really cool villain. Um, okay. Well, I, I can't make everyone happy there, uh, random guy. So, who knows? can't i can't do it all so all right well uh just past an hour guys so i think i'm done uh you all have a good night just watch out for entps being intimidating and creepy because chances are they're not actually intimidating and creepy it's just you being shallow so <laughs> be aware of that and uh you all have a good night and i will see you uh next time uh by the way the new cutting edge with csj episode i believe let me check my schedule it is, it could be this Thursday. It is uh, this Thursday at 7.30 Eastern for those of you who are journeyman members. And I recommend you check it out because we're going to be discussing study techniques for the 16 types and how to maximize uh, uh, certain things in that regard. So I'll see you all later. You have a good night.